I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Razabani for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to have with me. Didn't expect to see him here. I thought you, I thought Eddie might have sent you to Australia, but he's gone himself, Mr. Frank Smith. Frank, uh, how are we doing, mate? Good. I mean, I've been to Australia, came back for this, and then flying back out there again. You're joking. Yeah, yeah I'm joking. You are joking, right? Oh, wow. I did. Hey, hey. There, there. Champ, champ. Champ, champ. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't get a call up. I bet you're glad. What, to not get a call-up? No, do you know, I, I don't mind flying, I get used to it. I quite, I've never been to Australia, I was fancying 26 hours on the plane. But instead you got me here. Absolutely. I'm sure Emily would have loved to go on to Australia as well. 26 hours on plane with Emily, that would have been fun. No, Emily's looking for, Emily's coming with me to this on Saturday. So. Okay. okay. Um, obviously you're here for Alicia, but just before we touch on Alicia, a historic night for women's boxing. On, on Saturday night, I, I never thought I'd ever see an all women's card be so big, um, especially uh, here in London. Yeah, massive night, great for the sport. I'm, you know, I'm glad for everyone that it got rescheduled so quickly. You know, I think it's just over a month since it was supposed to happen. Obviously, unfortunate circumstances why it didn't. Um, but yeah, good job to get it back up and running and a massive card. You know, we're obviously here with Alicia uh, against Michaela Meyer, which is a massive fight. Could be a standalone main event. Um, and you know, you've got the main event as well in Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall, which is a brilliant fight, long time, long time coming. And uh, intrigued to see who comes away the winner there. You mentioned there that they turned it around quite quickly. Obviously, last week we saw the postponement of Eubank Ben. We'll come to that a bit later. But how tough is it for these fighters who obviously don't get paid unless they fight? But then, obviously, your promoters take a hit as well, massively as well. So, is it hard to have that balance? Yeah, look, it's, you know, ultimately we're running a business. We have to run a business, but at the same time, we have to deliver a service for our clients. It's a bit like the Lee Wood. Maurizio Lara situation, you know, we could have pulled that show completely, we'd sold 9,000 tickets, it was a, you know, the main event was the key focus, as most of the time it is, and uh, for us it was important that we kept the show going, because you had a lot of fighters who had been training for a long time that, that we wanted to get out, and then, you know, obviously with last week, the key for us was getting people out as soon as possible, and, you know, I think we've done that, you know, you got uh, Ellie Scottney's move to the October 29th show, so under, you know, three weeks after, and the Casey Taylor undercard, um, um, you got Galaria Fire Saint in the same fight has moved to Abu Dhabi. Shannon Courtney, she's got certain things going on, so she's going to fight in December. I think with her training camp and her coming back off injury, she wanted to time it in the right period. Um, and then we were just working on Felix Cash now. So you know, I think it's the same for all promoters. Our job is to get people out and get people active as soon as possible. And unfortunately, things do happen in this sport sometimes that are out of your control. I know a lot of the UK fans are looking forward to the main event in Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shield. Um, I've seen on Twitter and I've just spoke to Todd DeBerf as well. The Americans are very much looking forward to Alicia and Michaela. How do you see that fight playing out? A yeah, massive fight, you know, really big fight. Um, you know, I was at, I think I was at one of Michaela Meyer's last fights, not the last one, maybe the one before against Hamadouche. You know, she's uh, she's built, they built her up, you know, in the in the US. Um, and Baumgartner, obviously, she came over here, beat Terry Harper. You know, shocked a lot of people that night. Um, and this is a big moment to go and become a unified champion. I believe she can do it. She showed. You know, she showed her power that night against Terry Harper. Um, you know, she's a constant professional. She's always ready, always on the weight. And I think we're going to see a brilliant performance for her, from her come Saturday. And like I say, a new unified champion. We know Boxer and Sky are working with yourself. They're working with McKennessy, with Savannah. They're working with top rank as well. Is that a good sign? Do we need more of that? Do we need to see? I know you've sent Felix Cash on, on to Queensbury once upon a time as well. So it's important that you guys all work together to give us the best possible fights? Yeah, look, I think we're always always been open to it, whether it's Golden Boy, we did this deal with Top Rank for this fight, um, and it was a fight that we've been talking about for a long time, been working, you know, speaking closely with George Warren about a few bits recently, one that didn't come off, but one I think will come off soon. Um, so, you know, I think it's positive. I think, you know, it's a, it's a good thing for the sport. Ultimately, we all want to make the best fights, and I think, you know, that's, that's going to be what's needed to, to grow the sport of boxing. Okay, well, we look forward to a historic night of boxing on Saturday night. Um, Frank, I'm going to ask you some questions, obviously, regarding the events last week that took place. I, and I do appreciate that there's a lot going on in the background. And legally, there may, not, there may be things you cannot say, so I do appreciate that. But obviously, the more information you give to us uh, will be appreciated. One of the first things that people say that was when 
when the test results were confirmed back in September, why did it take so long? Why did it wait till almost 72 hours before the show to cancel or postpone the show? Ultimately, that's a, a decision led by the British Boxing Board of Control. You know, they're, they're the party in the, in the UK that are set to guide and, you know, and uh, control the sport uh, and ultimately sanction the event. You know, we can't, as Matchroom, you know, ultimately we, we promote Conor Ben Wasserman and promote Chris Eubank. You know, there's a lot of talk about, like, Wasserman should have done this or Matchroom should have done this. We have to work with the fighters. So the fighters, it's up to them to decide. So in this case, it's up to Chris Eubank Jr. to decide. If already not decided by the British Boxing Board of Control. So the British Boxing Board of Control decided to make their decision. 72 hours, very late, I agree with you. You know, if that's, if that's the route they were going down. It all comes down to process with these things. And there's certain processes that have been followed in the past that maybe weren't followed here. And that's all we ask for, is that the correct process is followed. You know, we're not here. We could have, you know, there was a lot of talk about us going to, you know, the High Court to get an injunction, us using another um, regulatory body to come over and deliver the event. You know, the event, like, it could have gone ahead. But we, as a collective, made a decision that they weren't routes we were going to go down. You know, so ultimately, as I say, it comes down to the British Boxing Board of Control making their decision that they made. I, I know Connor went on the match media, uh, was, I think it was on the Wednesday where he spoke, and he said he had spoken to Chris Eubank Jr. personally on the day. Chris went on and said no, he hadn't spoken to Connor. But fighters would fight under any condition. But is it the responsibility of people around them to put their hand over their shoulder and say, this isn't good for you, this isn't safe for you, potentially. I think in terms of that conversation, as far as I'm aware, they did have a conversation about it. It may not have been that day they had spoken, though. Um, you know, when it comes to fighters, I agree with you. Fighters need teams around them to help them make decisions. You know, Chris has got a group of people around him that have been around his career for a long time to help him those. You know, multiple parties took a number of independent scientific and medical advice around this fight. You know, and, and that was, you know, between essentially Chris Eubank. But we're all here to help fighters and we want the, the events to be safe. But, you know, it's essentially the fighter's decision at that point, if not decided by the, the sanctioning organisation. We can't legally just say, no, 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 we're canning this event because we could be in a legal predicament then. You know, rightly or wrongly. So it's very easy for people to sit on the sidelines and say you should have done this, you should have done that, but who don't know any of the detail around it. You know. When it got leaked, it seemed like the fight was still on until that article came out and then an uproar took place amongst everybody about this particular substance that he failed in and it seemed like that the board came out after the article had released the story. So are we assuming if the article didn't come out that the fight would have taken place? Look, I can't speak on that, you know, ultimately, as I keep saying, the British Boxing Board of Control had a decision to make. They made their decision, and, you know, off the back of that, the event didn't go ahead. Um, I think it's hard to say, you can't, it's hard to say if this didn't happen, that didn't happen, because who knows? Because we, we aren't in that situation. But they made a decision, and that's, that's what happened. Frank, what's the theory in using a body like VADA when the board doesn't accept it? I, I'm just trying to understand. We, understand, we accept the UCAD here in the UK. So why use VADA? Why pay for VADA if, then, if they have certain finding, findings, it doesn't make a difference to the actual outcome of the fight and the show? Well, essentially, it's testing for the fighters. It's requested by the fighters. So, you know, UCAD, or sorry, uh, the British Boxing Board of Control only will accept UCAD testing. That's always been their rules, and in other occasions they followed those as well. So, you know, that's something. I think ultimately what needs to be looked at is the process in terms of if the British Boxing Board of Control change their process today, as of today, and say for any fights moving forward, if a fighter tests positive, and regardless of whether they still were hearings, it's, it's their process to decide. So if they turn around and say, from now onwards, we're accepting VADA tests, that's for the British Boxing Board of Control to decide, essentially. You know, we're not the regulatory body. We're putting the event on, as with Wasserman, but the regulatory body, body are there to protect, obviously, the fighters being their key, their key job. Um, so I think that's where they, that's where now needs to be looked at for moving forward. And maybe they bring that in, I don't know, for moving forward. This is quite confusing, obviously, we know that Billy Joe Saunders issue where he was fine on, on kind of UCAT but not on VADA, but is this where the mess is, where the, the board need to 
have to just accept if you fail a test, whether it's UK, WADA, WADA, it's a it's a failed test, full stop. I think I think what they have to is obviously they have a process for these things because there has been numerous occasions where it has subsequently been proven that hey, it was contamination for various reasons. I'm not a scientific expert. I'm not going to go into detail of it and. That's the process that needs to go through. That hasn't happened here, and that's the process that is being is being gone through now. Um, so yeah, I think all of these things come back to the British Boxing Board of Control, I'd say, or any relevant authority reviewing their guidelines and their rules, which they were within their right to do at this point onwards. But at that point, they didn't have set guideline and rules that they looked at, and they made a decision three days out after knowing about it. You know, and you know, that, that's that. A couple of days ago, another article came out to say that Connor had failed another test. Is it just a matter of going through that process and going through this investigation to see what the conclusion of the facts are? Look, everything we're relating to Connor now is going through his own legal process to, you know, to clear his name. Um, he, he, and his team and the, the independent medical advisors, they'll be going through that process now. And like I say, it is just about going through the correct process. And ultimately, it's going to be a hard time. But it's a very hard time for him. And all I would say is it's like anyone who's 25, 26 years old. The pressure that is upon him now is have your view when he has the right, like other people have had, to actually prove himself, you know, prove himself innocent. And then have your view. But, you know, in, in our day and age, it's just instant sort of everyone has their opinion without any facts, you know. There, there is a fact, yes, that, you know, that a test is positive, but it doesn't mean you know any detail around it. Just like I'm not directly involved. It's a Connor Ben case that he's going down now, and he's going through that process. So we have to allow him that, like, other, again, other people in not just boxing, but other sports have been allowed as well. We know on Friday Chris Eubank Jr. posted a picture of him, 157 pounds, bang on the weight. He said, I made weight. And then on Saturday, he posted another video where he said, I told you I'll make weight something along those lines and he was just under 160 pounds are we saying that the rehydration clause was three pounds no 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 no. but it wasn't that he was just showing that you know the truth is with junior is you see all this thing on the internet you see him eating all this food but he is a true professional so people judge him based on eating you know this that the other he was always going to do the weight but it it wasn't three pounds no definitely wasn't no he looked very, very drained, I must say. I probably, I've covered a lot of Chris Eubank Jr.'s fights over the years, and it's probably not the greatest picture I saw him on Saturday weighing in uh, what was supposed to be his fight night. Yeah, he actually looked ripped, though, didn't he, in his body? Um, a bit like you. No, mate, I've just started, though. Started the process. Not, I don't think I'm ever going to look like Eubank Jr., but uh, <laughs> started the process. But, you know, he. one thing what I'm trying to say is, you know, everyone has this perception of what they see on the internet. He is a constant professional and you know, he worked very hard to, to do that. Just moving on, obviously I know Eddie's spoken about this, Frank's spoken about this. I think George did something on TalkSport as well, but this whole Fury, Joshua stuff fell apart. It doesn't look like it's going to happen this year, but is the relationship still good enough? Are you still respectable to each other that it could happen in the future? Yeah, look, I spoke to George Warren yesterday or on text. And um, we're working on something else currently that you know hopefully could be done soon. You know, it's still there's still a good relationship there, and I think that was I said in an interview. If anything came out of those discussions we had around Joshua Fury, then that's a positive that came out of it. We know Fury's going to go out early December. Do you expect Joshua to fight before the end of the year? Well, you know, I think we're possibly looking at December. Maybe also move, could it move into the early part Q1 of next year? So that's something we're working through now, and we'll have an update soon. Okay, Frank, I appreciate you giving me a little bit of your time, my man. Uh, and yeah, roll on fight week for your woman, Alicia, uh, and Mikhail Mela on the Shields and Marshall on the card Saturday night, O2 Arena. Looking forward to it, mate. Frank Smith, IFL TV, thank you very much. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.